Hey, Minimizers, you're getting ready to watch some footage from one of the Minimalist live events. If you'd like to see us on the road, head on over to theminimalists.com to find a city near you. Or you can watch recordings of all of our live events over at patreon.com slash theminimalists. Enjoy. Howdy. Hey, Patreon supporter here. What's your name? Oh, man. Samir. Hey, Samir. Thanks for supporting us, Samir. What's on your mind? Um, you kind of answered this, but I was looking for a little bit of a deeper answer. Um, it's rare that you, you see a duo like you guys work together for so long. Um, how do you resolve conflict? You know... Wait, 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 just, wait, wait, wait. wait. Is, is there any context that you want to... No, no context. No context? I just oh. give in as much as I can, honestly. <laughs> like, no. let's, let's talk about what, what, what do you mean by conflict, really? Because... Um, and, and I'm not trying to put you guys on the no, spot. I'm, I'm no, it's a good question. I'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. I'm, I'm just yeah. trying to... I, I just... I don't... The question presupposes that there's conflict. <laughs> no, no so, so for example, like if, you know, I've had businesses in the past where I've had partners, some of them worked out well, some of them didn't work out well, and I'm thinking, how could I have better uh, headed off that conflict rather than saying, this isn't going to work and throw my hands up in the air and walk away? Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, for me... In a situation like that, like with, with a business partner, I am in a situation like that with a business partner. Well, I mean, first off, Josh and I have known each other since we were fat little fifth graders. That's totally true. So like, we know each other very, very well, which means we really understand each other's preferences. We understand each other's likes and dislikes and, and our little quirks and whatever it is. And the fact is, is that him and I, or even me and TK, I mean, you know, these are two men that I really, really love. So I go out of my way to respect their preferences, to respect them. And here's, a th here's a, so that's number one, is I go out of my way to respect my friends, family, business partners. The other thing, because well, that is the best way to get respect back, by the way, is when you can go out of your way to respect someone's preferences, then they're more apt to go out of their way to respect your preferences. If you're starting from a, a zero-sum game and you're like, well, I'm not gonna budge until they budge, I mean, that's probably not, not the right approach. But uh, the, other, the other thing, too, is, oh man, I totally forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I got an answer, but it's a, a short one. I'd love to hear what TK has to say about yeah. conflict. Okay, go now, okay, go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, I think about this uh, Bobby McFerrin song, Don't Worry, Be Happy, and, and don't worry, that's not my answer. But there's a line in there where he says, uh, in every life you have some trouble, but when you worry, you make it double. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, we could. <laughs> I, I love that line, though, because it, it captures the idea that having problems isn't a problem. What makes problems difficult is we resent our lives for even having them. And so I think the first step to dealing with any problem is embracing the process of problem solving as a spiritual practice, to recognize that problems are not curses, but problems are gifts, not because they feel good, but because they make us better. And most of the things in life that are for our good are the things that challenge us, are the things that push us out of our comfort zones. Because we not only attract things into our lives based on our current state of consciousness, but also based on our own innate impulse towards progress. There's a part of us that's in tune with certain realities, but there's another part of us that's always striving to become a better version of ourselves. And sometimes we attract people and challenges into our lives that are designed to help us get to that next level of self-authenticity. So when you have a problem, say, you know what? I'm going to be present in a state of non-judgmental open-mindedness and attend to what this problem is trying to teach me. Second, because you didn't just ask about problems, you asked about conflict, which presupposes that there's another person involved. I just read a quote the other day by Mother Angelica that said, being a saint would be easy if it wasn't for other people. Right? <laughs> That's the hard part, right? It's the, it's when you put the other person in there, it gets really difficult. Here, here's one piece of advice I'd, I'd give on that, and, and I'll hand it over to Josh. I would say, whenever you're trying to resolve a problem with another person, don't try to convince the other person that, or don't, don't base your solution on trying to get the other person to agree with you on how much of an idiot you think they're being. <laughs> because if the other person needs to agree with you on how much of an idiot you think they're being in order to solve the problem, the problem will never get solved. Hmm. Instead of focusing on their idiocy, step back and focus on what is the goal. Because what is a problem? A, 
a problem is when you have a goal, some kind of outcome, experience, or result you want to create, and then there's some other kind of thing that functions as an obstacle standing between you and that desired outcome. That's what the problem is. And problems cannot exist if we didn't have goals or outcomes that we want to create. And so use that problem as an opportunity to take inventory of the outcomes you want to create and say, is there an opportunity for me to let that go? Is there an opportunity for me to let go of the assumption that I need that outcome in order to be who I am, that I need that outcome in order to be happy? And also you can ask yourself, is there a way of going about that outcome that doesn't require me to be married to the path that I've become addicted to following? So can I let go of either the outcome or can I let go of my one dimensional way of thinking about how to manifest that outcome? I love that, man. It's like, it's like, are you, are you, is it, will you, are you willing to let it go? Are you willing to like plant your flag and die on this hill? And so, and thanks because like that totally helped me grab my thought back from the ether. <laughs> I don't take things personal. Like I try so hard to not take things personal. To say I don't take things personal, that's like 99% true. There are some times where I catch myself in that and I'm like, wait, why am I taking this so personal? Like this is a problem that a friend has and I have the opportunity to help them solve it. This isn't a knock at me. This is, this is just an inconvenience right now, or yeah, maybe it is a problem arising. So not take, and I do this with my, my wife, Mariah, who's here somewhere. Thanks for coming, Mariah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, tr I try really hard like to just not take things personal because sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll be in a mood myself for whatever reason, and I might have a certain energy that I'm projecting or an emotion that I'm projecting, and it has nothing to do with anyone but me. And it's like, I will have to sometimes say like, hey, I know I'm being kind of a crap head right now. I see a kid in the front audience, so I'm going to try and not cuss this whole <laughs> podcast. You know, I'm try I know I'm like being a jerk right now, but please don't take this personal. It's, it truly is not you. It's me. I'm just like a little messed up right now. So not only do I not take things personal, I also try to go out of my way to like make sure other people aren't taking things personal from me. What's your name, man? Samir. Samir. All conflict is self-conflict. I think that um, we get so caught up in thinking that um, the problem is outside of us and the, whatever the other person's behavior is is making us mad. But the anger arises within us and that person could behave in that same exact situation or quote unquote worse with someone else with a completely different outcome. The anger would not arise within them. So anytime we feel frustrated, anytime we feel upset, anytime we feel offended, and we get offended recreationally now, <laughs> that's never someone else's problem. It's always my, even if they've done something to intentionally try to, def to offend me, to upset me, it's up to me. And so the reason that we often get offended is because we've been, we've been told a lie that things are good or bad or right or wrong. The other day, Ryan and I were talking about this very specific thing, and he told me I was being complacent about that thing. And a knee-jerk reaction from me would be like, well, no, I'm not. But the answer is, yeah, I am. And what's wrong with that? I, I, I felt like it was, yes, it is perfectly appropriate for me to be complacent about this thing. And so, yes, you're right. I understand that I am. And because Ryan wasn't saying, well, you should be another way. And I think the, way, the reason that we have very little conflict between us is because we love each other. But most of us don't understand what love is. We say love is what? There's a bit in the book where it's, um, I love my wife, but I also love burritos. <laughs> well, neither one of those things are love when we talk about it. Because when we talk about loving burritos, what, do we, what does that mean? I really like this thing. That's great. Well... When I say I love my wife, what does that mean? Well, most of us say it, mean, it means it, it's an attachment. I'm attached to this person. I need you. We've been told those lies by pop songs for a long time now, right? I need you in order to be happy. You complete me. <laughs> Nonsense. I'm already complete without you, but you do augment or enhance my experience of life. To love someone is to see them for who they are without trying to change them. And so the reason Ryan and I don't have a ton of con conflict is because 
I'm not trying to change him, and he's not trying to change me. To try to change someone means you hate who they are. You can tweet that podcast, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You had me a hello, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Especially when you were like, because you were looking at me, you were like, you, you don't, I'm completing myself, but you augment me. <laughs> TK, <laughs> you incomplete me. That's right, but we love you still. Man, you. you know, it, it made me think when you were saying that, Josh, how whenever there is some type of disagreement or misunderstanding, or you can call it conflict, whatever you want, I look at it as an opportunity to like understand you more. Yes. And, and through understanding you, I understand other people. And so when you escalate a conflict, you are losing that opportunity to have a deeper understanding for who, whatever it is, who, whoever it is that you're having that conflict with. So going out of your way to understand is always going to, it's just always going to be more meaningful. Well, the opposite of that is what? Self-righteousness. Yeah. And so that's the reason that we want to be right in a situation. In order for me to be right, someone else has to be wrong. These are just cultural imperatives that we've made up. Oh, I'm right, therefore you're wrong. And it's like, maybe we just have a different understanding of this thing. Help me understand your understanding. And even at the end of this, if I don't completely understand, it doesn't mean that I'm right. It just means that I don't understand. You know, uh, one thing I'll add to that is we, we've kind of been conditioned to think about power as something that depends on getting other people to see reality in the same way as you. And so if, if I can't convince you to believe in my idea, or if I can't get, convince you to vote in the way that I vote, well, then I'm, I'm fundamentally powerless because all power is democratic, right? Mm. Certainly there's no such thing as the creative power of the individual, which can be expressed in a way that's independent of other people's disagreement. Well, most of the good things that we get in life comes from that kind of creative power. There's this beautiful moment, and um, I'm going old school here, but it's in one of the Matrix movies where uh, Morpheus, he's this very esoteric character who believes in a lot of strange things. And he's arguing with this very pragmatic man and telling him what he thinks the solution is. And he gets very upset, and he says, damn it, Morpheus. Not everyone believes in, in, in fairies and oracles and all of these things. Not everyone believes as you believe. And Morpheus looked at him and he said, fortunately, my beliefs do not require them to. Power isn't the ability to out-debate people. Power isn't the ability to use argument or logic to make people feel pressured to see things the way that you do. Power is the ability to look another person in the eye and say, you don't see it the way that I do. That's okay. I give you permission to be who you need to be because I know how to express myself authentically and creatively in spite of your disagreement. I love you anyway, and I'm going to do me anyway, and our lives will intersect organically at the place where our deepest gladness meets. That's power. Amen. Yeah. Did you enjoy this video? If so, you can listen to full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists today. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.